Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts, October, November 2020, paper 3 one, question number 5. This is structured paper 3 which consists of 6 questions, each of 25 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 3 hours. So we will be attempting to solve each question under 30 minutes. And this question number 5 is a part of section B, which deals with cost and management accounting. Now without any further delay, let's get started. Bob manufactures and sells two products. He provides the following information. So we have product A and product B. And the monthly sales for product A is 2,000 units, whereas the monthly sales for product B is 3,000 units. And we're also given the direct material cost, direct labor cost, selling price per unit for both the products. Then we're also given the total overheads for the month, which consists of rent, machine setup costs, packaging, and quality inspections. And the total of these four is 61,160. And we're also given information stating that overheads are split between two products on the basis of total sales revenue. Okay, so let's figure out our total sales revenue. I'm just going to write it here. For product A, we know that the level of monthly sales is 2000 unit and we know that the selling price per unit is 29. So in order to figure out the total sales revenue, we can just multiply these two together. So that's going to be 2,000 units times the rate of 29 per unit, which gives the total sales revenue for product A to be 58,000. Now we repeat the same process for product B. That's going to be the number of units produced, which is 3,000, and the selling price per unit of 46. So let's multiply these two together. That's 3,000 times 46, which results in the total sales revenue for product B to be 138,000. And since we know that the basis of apportionment for our overhead is the total sales revenue, let's first figure out the total for both A and B. So the sales revenue for A and B is 58,000 plus 138,000, which results in the total value of 196,000. So out of the total sales value of 196,000, 58,000 belongs to product A and 138,000 belongs to product B. So let's split our overheads for A and B now. So for product A, we will first be starting with our total overheads of 61,160. And we know that out of the total sales value of 196,000, 58,000 belongs to A. And since this is our basis of apportionment, we can just multiply with 58,000 out of 196,000. So this gives our overhead apportion to product A to be 61,160 times 58,000 divided by 196,000, which results in the value of 18,098.37. And we can just round it off. So that's going to be 18,098. Now we repeat the same process for product B. We will be starting with our total overheads of 61,160. And we know that out of total sales revenue of 196,000, 138,000 belongs to product B. And since this is our basis of apportionment, we can just multiply with 138,000 out of 196,000. And this gives the overhead for product B to be 61,160 times 138,000 divided by 196,000, which results in the value of 43,061.63. Let's round it off. So that's going to be 43,062. Okay, now we can look at our first question. We need to calculate to two decimal places the profit or loss per unit of each product. Okay, we can first start with figuring out the total profit or loss and then figure out our unit profit or loss of each product. Let's start it. So we have product A and product B. And since we are trying to figure out whether there was profit or loss, let's start with our total sales revenue. And we already figured out the total sales revenue for both our products A and B. And it was 58,000 for A and 138,000 for B. Let's substitute these values into our statement. So that's 58,000 for A and 138,000 for B. Now we can move towards subtracting all of our costs. And the first one is direct materials. So we need to figure out the total direct materials for both our product A as well as B. 
So we are given the direct material cost per unit and in order to figure out the total direct material cost, we can just multiply it with our total units produced or total units sold for both product A as well as product B. So I'm just going to write it down right here. And for product A, we know that the total monthly units is 2000. So we can just multiply it with our direct material cost per unit of dollar eight. And this gives the total direct material cost for product A to be 2000 times eight, which results in 16,000. Let's repeat the same process for product B. We have the total units produced of 3000. And we can just multiply it with the direct material cost per unit of 12 which gives the total direct materials for product B to be 3000 times 12, which results in the value of 36,000. So let's substitute these two values into our statement. We figured the direct materials cost for product A to be 16,000 and for product B it was 36,000. And since this is an expense which needs to be subtracted, I'm just going to record it in a bracket. Okay, and the next expense was that of direct labor. Let's have a look above. We can see that we are given the direct labor cost per unit. Again, we repeat the same process like we did for our direct material. So I'm just going to write it right here. Let's start with product E. Since this is a cost per unit, in order to figure out the total cost, we can just multiply it with our total units. So for product A, we can see our total units of 2000. And we can see our direct labor cost per unit of $1.10. So this gives the total direct labor cost for product A to be 2000 times 10, which results in the value of 20,000. Now we repeat the same process for product B. That's going to be the total production units of 3000 times our direct labor cost per unit of 11. So this gives the total direct labor cost for product B to be 3000 times 11, which results in the value of 33,000. Let's substitute these two values into our statement as well. So that's 20,000 for product A and 33,000 for product B. And the final expense that we need to subtract in order to figure out the profit or loss would be overheads. And we already allocated the overheads for product A and product B on the basis of total revenue. We can see that for product A, the total overhead was 18,098, whereas for product B, it was 43,062. So let's substitute these two values into our statement as well. That's going to be 18,098 and 43,062. Okay. Now we can figure out the profit and loss for both product A and product B. So for product A, that's going to be the sum of these four amounts, which is 58,000 minus 16,000 minus 20,000 minus 18,098, which results in the positive value of 3,902. So this means that this is a profit, right? So that's total profit. And for product B, that's going to be the sum of these four values. So that's 138,000 minus 36,000 minus 33,000 minus 43,062, which results in the positive value of 25,938. Again, this is a profit. But in our question, we are required to figure out the profit per unit of each product. So let's figure that out. Profit per unit. So if you have the total profit and total number of units, for any product, we can easily figure out our profit per unit, right? So that's just going to be total profit divided by the total number of units. In case of product A, we figured out the total profit to be 3,902. And we can just divide it with our total number of units. And for product A, it was 2,000. So this gives our profit per unit for product A to be 3,902 divided by 2,000, which results in the value of 1.95. And for product B, we have our total profit to be 25,938. And we know that the total units for product B was 3,000. So we just divide it, which gives our profit per unit for product B to be 25,938 divided by 3,000, which results in the value of 8.65. All right. So this concludes the first part of this question. Now we can move towards the second one. We are given additional information. First of all, let's have a look at our second question. 
we need to calculate the amount of overhead allocated or apportioned to each product using the additional monthly data. All right, so let's have a look. We are told that approximately 40% of the floor space in the factory is used in manufacture of product A and 60% in the manufacture of product B. Since we're talking about floor space, this relates to rent. Let's have a look above to see the value for total rent. Okay, so the total rent amounted to 42,000. And now we need to apportion it to product A and product B on the basis of floor space. And we know that manufacture of product A only requires 40% of the floor space, which means that only 40% of the total rent should be allocated to product A. And similarly, manufacture of product B requires 60% of floor space, which means that 60% of total rent should be allocated to product B. All right, let's do that. We have our total rent of 42,000. And for product A, that's going to be 40% of this. So that's just 42,000 times 40%, which we can write down as 0 0.40. And this gives the rent apportioned to product A to be 42,000 times 0 0.40, which results in the value of 16,800. Let's repeat the same process for product B. 60% is allocated to product B. So that's going to be 42,000 times 60%, which we can write down as 0 0.60. And this results in the rent apportioned to product B to be 42,000 times 0 0.60, which results in the value of 25,200. So let's write it down in our answer sheet. Okay, so we have product A and product B. And we are apportioning rent. Okay. We figured out the allocation of rent for product A is 16,800, whereas for product B, it is 25,200. Let's write it down. So that's 16,800 and 25,200. Okay, then let's move to information two. The machinery used to manufacture product A is set up 300 times a month and the machinery for product B 500 times a month. Okay, so the total setup is just the sum for the setups for both product A and B. So that's 300 times for A and 500 times for B, which results in the total setups to be 800 times. And since we're talking about setting up the machine, this definitely relates to machine setup costs. Let's have a look above. Okay, so the total machine setup cost is 8,000. Let's write it down. So we're talking about machine setup and the total is 8000 so now we need to apportion it on the basis that out of 800 setups 300 belongs to product a and 500 belongs to product b let's figure it out for product a that's going to be the total of 8000 times our basis of apportionment which is out of 800 setups 300 belongs to a so that's going to be times 300 by 800 this results in the machine setup allocated to product A to be 8,000 times 300 divided by 800, which results in the value of 3,000. Let's repeat the same process for product B. That's going to be the total cost of 8,000 times our basis for a portion, which is that out of 800 setups, 500 belongs to product B. So that's going to be 500 divided by 800. And this gives our machine setup cost allocated to product B to be 8,000 times 500 divided by 800, which results in the value of 5,000. So let's record these values in our solution as well. We're talking about machine setup cost. And we figured it out to be 3,000 for product A and 5,000 for product B. Now let's move towards our third information. The number of orders packed for dispatch are 700 a month for product A and 420 a month for product B. So let's figure out the total orders packed. That's going to be 700 for product A plus 420 for product B, which results in the total orders packed for dispatch in a month to be 1120. And since we're talking about number of orders, this definitely relates to our packaging cost. Let's have a look above. We can see that our total packaging cost amounts to 6,160. Okay. So we have our packaging to be 6,160. Now we need to allocate it to our products A and B on the basis of the number of orders. So let's figure it out for product A. 
that's going to be the total cost of 6960 times our apportionment basis which is that out of 1120 orders packed 700 belong to product a so that's going to be 700 divided by 1120 which gives our packaging cost allocated to product A to be 6,960 times 700 divided by 1,120, which results in the value of 3,850. Now we repeat the same process for product B. That's going to be the total cost of 6,160 times our basis for apportionment, which is out of 1,120 orders packed, 420 belongs to product B. So that's times 420 divided by 1,120 which results in the packaging cost apportioned to product B to be 6,160 times 420 divided by 1,120, which results in the value of 2,310. Let's record this in our answer. We're talking about packaging costs. And we figured it out to be 3,850 for product A and 2,310 for product B. Let's have a look at our final information. 300 quality inspections take place each month for product A and 700 for product B. So the total inspection is just going to be 300 for product A plus 700 for product B, which results in the total of 1000 inspections. And since we're talking about inspection, this obviously relates to quality inspections. And the total cost for quality inspections was 5000. Okay, so we're talking about quality inspections and this amounted to 5,000 and we now have to portion it to our products A and B on the basis that out of the total of 1,000 inspections, 300 belong to product A and 700 belong to product B. So let's figure out our quality inspection cost for product A. That's going to be the total of 5,000 times our basis of apportionment, which is that out of 1,000 inspections, 300 belong to A. So that's times 300 divided by 1,000, which results in the quality inspections cost allocated to product A to be 5,000 times 300 divided by 1,000, which results in the value of 1,500. And now we repeat the same process for product B. That's going to be the total of 5,000 times the basis for apportionment, which is that out of 1,000 inspections, 700 belong to product B. So that's 700 out of 1,000. And this gives our quality inspections cost for product B to be 5,000 times 700 divided by 1,000, which results in the value of 3,500. So let's record this in our solution as well. We're talking about quality inspections. And we figured it out to be 1500 for product A and 3500 for product B. Now we can easily figure out the overheads allocated to each product. So for product A, that's going to be the sum of these four values, which is 16,800 plus 3000 plus 3850 plus 1500, which results in the total overhead for product A to be 25,150. Now for product B, that's going to be the sum of these four values, which is 25,200 plus 5,000 plus 2,310 plus 3,500, which results in the total overheads allocated to product B to be 36,010. This concludes the second part of this question. Now we can move towards the third one. We need to name and explain why one of Bob's overhead costs cannot be allocated using activity-based costing. Okay, so the four costs that we allocated or four overheads that we allocated were rent, machine setup cost, packaging and quality inspections, right? And out of these four, we know that rent was just allocated on the basis of a percentage or a certain proportion, right? Which is not actually based on any activity. But if we're talking about machine setup costs, this actually related to the activity of setting up a machine, right? So this is obviously activity related. For packaging, we allocated it on the basis of number of orders packaged. So obviously there is an activity again. This is based on an activity. And for quality inspections, we base this on our number of inspections made for both products A and B. Again, that is an activity, right? So what we know is out of these four overheads, rent is the one that cannot be allocated using activity-based costing. So let's write it down. Rent cannot be allocated under activity-based costing and this is due to the fact that it is a fixed cost right because it is a fixed cost
and we know that fixed costs are not subject to any changes in activity level so let's write it down as well and is not subject to changes in activity level all right this concludes the third part of this question now we can move towards the fourth one we need to calculate to two decimal places the profit or loss per unit of each product which would be earned if overheads were calculated using the additional monthly data all right so we can just prepare the statement that we did in the first part of this question so this is product a and product b okay let's have a look above we know that on the basis of additional monthly data only the overheads are being changed so the remaining sales direct materials and direct labor is still going to remain the same right so let's include these three first that's sales direct material and direct labor and we have our overheads as well so for these three values, we can just substitute this from our first part. Let's have a look above. All right. So for product A, we have the sales of 58,000, direct materials cost of 16,000 and direct labor cost of 20,000. Let's substitute these three values into our statement. That's 58,000 for sales, 16,000 for direct material and 20,000 for direct labor. All right, let's repeat the same process for product B. We can see that sales for product B is 138,000, direct materials expense is 36,000, and direct labor expense is 33,000. So let's substitute these three values as well. That is 138,000 sales. Then we have direct material expenses of 36,000, and direct labor cost of 33,000. Now for overheads, we will be substituting the value that we calculated in our third part. Okay, that is the second part. So we can see that we allocated our overheads for product A to be 25,150 and for product B, we allocated it to be 36,010. So let's substitute these two values into our statement. That was 25,150 for product A and 36,010 for product B. So now we can easily figure out if there was a profit or loss. So, so for product A, that's going to be the sum of these four amounts, which is 58,000 minus 16,000 minus 20,000 minus 25,150, which results in a negative value of 3,150. So this is a loss. Let's figure it out for product B as well. That is 138,000 minus 36,000 minus 33,000 minus 36,010, which results in the positive value of 32,990. So we can just write our heading as total profit and loss. Now we actually need to figure out our unit profit or loss. So that's unit profit loss. And if we already have our total profit or loss and the total number of units, we can easily figure out our profit or loss per unit, right? So for product A, that's going to be the total loss of 3,150 divided by the total number of units, which is 2000. And this results in the loss per unit for product A to be 1.58. And since this is a loss, I'm just going to record it in a bracket. Now we repeat the same process for product B. That's going to be the total profit of 32,990 divided by the number of units, which is 3000. And this results in the profit per unit for product B to be 11. Okay, this concludes the fourth part of this question. Now we can move towards the fifth one. So now we need to advise Bob whether or not he should make any changes to the selling prices. So what we know is that the changes in allocation of overheads will not result in the total profit of product A and product B. Let's write it down. The changes in allocation of overheads. has not changed total profit 
but after making the changes to our allocation we know that product a will make a loss per unit let's write it down And since we're talking about selling prices, Bob definitely needs to consider his competitors selling prices as well, right? So let's write it down. Bob needs to consider what his competitors are charging. And we know that the product A already makes a loss per unit. So if we are to increase its sales, then maybe the customer might find it too high and move to other competitors. So let's write it down as well. If he increased the price of A, then sales might fall. Okay, now considering these factors, we now need to advise Bob whether or not he should make any changes to the selling price. I would advise him not to make any changes. So let's write that decision down clearly. Bob should not make any changes to the selling price. Alright, this concludes the fifth part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.